now that I've got all my, my head references in one place, I can start cutting them up. So if I take the horns of the giraffe, first I make sure I'm affecting the layer I want to affect. I'm just going to use my lasso, rough cut around what I want. Remember, you can augment your selections by holding down shift. I can add to it. By holding down option with the lasso, I can subtract from it. It's going to be your creature, so it's whatever you make the head out of. But it is going to be the focal point we kind of look at to understand what your creature is doing. All right, so then I take those horns, and I've got that element. So now I can just, to save memory, delete the smart object that it came from. All right, I can always bring that back in if I need it. But I, what's nice about duplicating it with the lasso and command J is it automatically rasterizes it for me. It also makes it about the size I need it for the sketch, right? So you don't want to cut it out until it's already sized about to what you need for the sketch. So now to make this work with this head position, because I already showed how this head position was about right, I need to play with this layer. I'm going to turn on auto select. And I might control T and hold down shift and maybe play with scale a little bit. Maybe play with warp because these are organic things. If I want to stretch those horns out a bit and that kind of bump, that looks kind of good. And then I can just do simple things with control T like rotate it back. Get it lined up with that midline. So I like these kind of projecting lids over the eye of what my creature will be. So it'll eventually be cat eyes. Just rough cutting. Next, let's do the mouth and the ears. And that's from this reference. So I'm going to do the ears first. Let's see, I'm just going to cut out with my lasso, roughly. I'll get the little tuft of white hair around the ears. Get those little tufts in the middle. Hit Command-J. Use the Move tool. Move that out and to the side. And then I also want the mouth from this source. So I'm going to use my lasso, make sure I'm on the right place. And the reason I don't want to grab those all together is because I want to be able to size them, transform them separately. It's always good to have some textural overlap, but I know I don't need the eyes. And then I can delete that smart object source material. Maybe I'll move this out first and then delete it. All right, so where is that? Where are those ears going to go? I might need to tilt them a little bit. Control T. I might need to flatten them out. Push them behind. I might even need to distort them. Kind of pinch them in to make it fit that anatomy. To put these kind of cat-like ears, even though it's from a red panda, to fit something like an iguana head is kind of tricky. So maybe about there. Okay. And then the mouth. Let's move that into place. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger. So I don't want it to look just like a red panda looks. 
Think about like that. Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm getting something pretty similar to what I sketched based on the references I found that I thought would work best. And with the red panda, I can hit control T and I can do limited things with distort to kind of tweak the angle to make sure it matches with the direction line of the rest of what I have. You know, like that. Little shifts. So I can maybe like tilt tilt it a little bit. I can even warp it a little bit, like maybe tug it down on one side more than the other. And then tuck it back. But nothing too extreme. And I don't know, I'll probably cut off some of these whiskers for sure. And you can always toggle with Command Z and see if you like those changes or not. And I think I do. Okay. Now the eyes. What's nice about labeling your reference images ahead of time is when you bring them into PhotoP, then your layers will actually have that name, at least as a smart object. They'll lose that name when you copy from them. But for the, the short time that they're there, they're very helpful. Okay, then I'm going to grab around these eyes. I do wish they weren't so grainy. And honestly, maybe I want to find some other eyes. But I can delete the smart object they come from and then move those eyes into place and then size them. Control T. Those eyes are pretty compelling, though. So I think we can make them work. Okay, next, we get rid of the excess that we need from this background smart object. Notice how almost none of it is even showing, but I need it because as I transition, that's kind of the, the thing that's going to go into the shoulders, into the spine. So... I'm going to lasso just what I need from that, which is just this top part, and then this neck ridge. Duplicate that, delete all the other stuff. So it doesn't influence me too much. Okay, now, now it's about cleaning it up and making colors and things match. So I'm going to start from the very top, the thing that's closest to the viewer. And in that case, I'm going to do the top of the head here, the giraffe horns and, yeah. So I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to adjustments. And I'm going to immediately go to levels. And I'm going to brighten up the midtones. quite a bit in this case so that it feels like it's lit similarly to these red panda ears. And I don't want to increase the contrast so much that I lose pixel definition. Okay, then I want to go to image adjustments. You'll remember this and go to color balance. And everything here is warm, but this is cool. So I want to move the midtones towards the reds and towards the yellows until it warms up. Again, not too much. And then I can take the shadows and maybe counter that by pushing that a little bit back towards the blues because I don't want to lose that dimensionality. And then the highlights, I think I can get away with putting the highlights a little bit warmer still towards the reds and the yellows. So something like that. Then OK. And again, you can always check this with your history. That's where it was before. That's after levels and color balance. Then if I want to, I can go to image adjustment and get pull out the big color guns, which is hue saturation, and see if I want to shift the hue. I definitely don't want it to go towards green, but I might want it to go a little bit towards magenta, like so. Just a tad. 
Okay, and now uh, I might as well cut it out because I want to see how it overlaps other things. So luckily, this was on a nice blue sky. So I can just take my magic wand with contiguous turned on, click on that blue without, well, I have a two pixel feather right now. So actually, I'm going to undo this, Command D, and I'm going to change that to zero pixel feather. I want just super sharp for right now. And that's going to leave a little bit of a, a blue ghost around everything. You see that? But that's okay for now. That shows me what's showing up and where the ears are and everything. And then for the rest of it, like here, I'm going to use my tablet. I have my tablet plugged in. And I'm going to use my eraser. And I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity. And I'm going to use an eraser that's a fairly large size, like maybe about 60 or 50 pixels, but pressure sensitive for size. So remember to check that whenever you're using a tablet so that the lighter you press, the smaller it is, the harder you press, the more you remove. Now, the big difference is right now I'm removing and it's a hard edge. And so I can use that when I'm next to hard surfaces like the horns. But when I get to softer surfaces, I might change that under the brush tool itself. I might take that hardness down. So that's slightly softer. And it's like feathering as you delete. But the first thing you need to do, we'll do a lot of soft, uh, soft brush erasing is we have to get rid of any of those hard edges internally before we transition. Any unwanted hard edges. So now I have kind of a nice relationship between these two things. Let's get the same on the other side. And I'm just going to soft erase out at 100% opacity this ridge on, on the giraffe so that it reveals the ear from that red panda. And because I already played with adjustments, these two things already kind of match somewhat. It's not going to take a whole lot more. Now that blue is a problem on the other side, and I've got these beautiful eyebrows right there that I also have on this side. So this is something, this is something I might want to keep. So I'm going to use my magic wand, and this time I'm going to turn off contiguous. Select this blue. Come on, there it is. Now it's selecting the blue everywhere with zero pixels feathered. And instead of just hitting delete like that, which could potentially get rid of blue pixels that are in the inside, I can just use it as a mask and use my 100% eraser to just hit that edge. And then hit Command D. It will leave, leave a little trail that then with my pressure sensitive 100% soft edged eraser, I can refine further. I'm losing track a little bit. Here we go. Where I am. And if it gets too complicated, kind of see what layer you're on. Then you can always turn off layers that are unclear. Now we're going to learn some specialized tools here. Before I soften it, I want to change those colors to match. Because that blue does not match, but I still want that edge. So we're going to learn some new tools here. They are dodge, burn, and sponge. And they exist on top of the type, the type tools, the big T. So it looks like a black lollipop. What I'm going to use is the burn tool. And the burn tool is like using levels, but being able to target it on a certain part of the layer with a brush. I'm going to use a pressure-sensitive brush. I'm going to use exposure always less 